the difference between biochemistry and molecular biology and like cell biology, systems biology, all these different ologies? Well, they're all just different ways that we can approach the same thing using different sorts of experimental strategies and looking at different levels. There's no clear distinction between any of them, but because we kind of artificially break things up when we're determining how we teach it, what course to take, what major to do, I thought I would give a sort of guide. For the most part, all of these different sub-disciplines are looking at the same thing, life, just from different angles. With biochemistry, this is my jam. Here we've got the intersection of chemistry and biology, and the focus is on the structure and function of macromolecules, so things like proteins, nucleic acids, or DNA and RNA, lipids, um, etc. And importantly, it focuses on the mechanisms by which they act and interact in order to make life possible. So there's often emphasis on enzymes and the reactions that they catalyze and how they catalyze that, maybe looking at kinetics and um, thermodynamics, as well as metabolic pathways. So how are molecules made and broken down in our bodies? Especially if you take a biochemistry class, you're probably going to get a lot of metabolism as well as a lot of that structure function things. However, if you do biochemistry as sort of like your life goal or not life goal, but your trajectory, you become a biochemist, you don't necessarily have to do a lot of metabolism or you don't have to do a lot of enzymes. There's a lot of different like subfields within biochemistry where you can specialize. So if you don't like metabolism topics, but you do like enzymes or you don't like the enzyme topics, but you do really like looking at metabolism, things like this, there can be a place for you in biochemistry. But if you're taking a course, be on the lookout for all of that stuff. Now, there's a lot of overlap between biochemistry and molecular biology. But with molecular biology, here there's more focus on cellular processes, especially those involving genetic information. This includes things like transcription, um, so going from DNA to RNA, translation, going from RNA to protein, replication, so when we're duplicating our DNA before cells divide, so each one gets a copy, um, those different processes and the molecules that are involved in those processes, but not at this sort of nitty gritty level of biochemistry, typically. So instead of looking exactly at how the enzymes are carrying out these processes, you're often looking instead of just kind of like the processes as a whole and maybe how you can manipulate those processes. So molecular biology is really, especially these days, integrated with biotech stuff. So how can we manipulate DNA? Maybe we want to manipulate it just so that we can understand a process better. Or maybe we want to actually do some sort of genetic engineering to maybe counteract the disease. So that would be sorts of things that you would do with that molecular biology. Biochemistry is also deeply um, related to structural biology. So structural biology here uses techniques like X-ray crystallography, microelectron microscopy, cryo-EM, um, and NMR to get a look at the 3D structure of molecules. And there's a focus on how that structure affects its function, which leads to doing biochemical experiments in order to figure that out. So maybe you see something in the structure, then you say you can hypothesize, oh, well, maybe this certain amino acid residue, this part of the protein is important for this thing. So let's make a change to this thing and then do some sort of biochemistry experiment to figure out if we were right. So that would be an example of structural biology. Now, don't confuse molecular biology with microbiology. Microbiology here, instead of dealing with sorts of groups of molecules and pathways and things, we're dealing with whole organisms, just tiny ones. This can include different types of bacteria and fungi and viruses, things like how are they similar and different? How would they, can they affect the environment? How can some of them cause disease? And in the lab, how can we experimentally classify them using different types of stains and growth media and things like this? Also don't confuse molecular biology with genetics. 
These again are going to be very interconnected. And so if you take these courses, you're probably going to relearn the same thing, um, but it's slightly different from slightly different angles. Genetics tends to deal with how genetic information is encoded and transmitted. So you will learn probably about like DNA and RNA structure, um, some of the same, some of the processes that you learned about in molecular biology, but it deals more with how sorts of genetic information is passed on. There's a large focus on Mendelian inheritance. So um, think of Mendel and his peas and um, how genetic information is passed down, as well as sort of not so simple inheritance patterns. Especially these days, it might include genomics. So genomics, when you see omics, think like big data sets. Geno genomics is kind of like genetics with large data sets and incorporating things like epigenetic modifications. So we can have histone modifications. Um, so histones are these proteins that your DNA is wound up around. And by modifying those histones, by acetylating them, methylating them, sticking different markers on them, this can influence how the DNA is actually um, is actually read out, as well as the kind of like 3D arrangement of chromatin. So there's various experimental methods that you can use to kind of figure out how DNA is organized within cells, and then look to see how that might affect how, how genes are expressed and things like this. Also don't confuse molecular biology with cell biology. So with molecular biology, we're dealing with things that are going on inside of the cells typically. And with cell biology, we're dealing with what goes on in the whole cells and between the cells. This includes intracellular compartmentalization, things like what's going on in our ER, what's going on in the Golgi, how do we have these all interconnected, as well as things like cell-to-cell -cell communication, um, extracellular matrices, et cetera. So lots of pathways and signaling pathways and talk between cells and inside the cells and movement inside of cells, um, all our actin and myosin and all that good stuff. That would be cell biology. If we take things a level up from the cell, we're dealing with things like physiology. This is going to address what goes on function-wise at the tissue and organismal levels. If you take a physiology course, it's typically going to be broken up into systems. So we cover the renal system, the nervous system, the respiratory system, et cetera. You might be taking physiology as part of an anatomy and physiology course, so like an a and And there you would learn about sort of the structures, the anatomy that is involved, as well as the processes that that anatomy is involved in. If you want to look at the interconnectedness of these systems, well, then you turn to systems biology. It looks at those, those systems and other systems using large data sets. So measuring lots of things. These can be metabolite levels, gene expression, protein modifications, genomics, et cetera. So lots of that omic stuff goes into systems biology, lots of computation, mathematical modeling, thinking of things in terms of networks rather than isolated systems or isolated processes. So that systems biology is kind of like the opposite in some sorts to, thing, to biochemistry, where we're really in biochemistry getting down to those nitty gritty mechanisms, the details at the molecular level. I love biochemistry. All those other things are great too. But I hope that this helps you better understand these kind of like artificial classifications when you're deciding what courses to take, what majors to take, et cetera. Um, be sure to look into all of the course, um, course requirements, um, course descriptions to figure out what sounds most interesting to you, because really you'll learn, you'll learn a lot no matter what you choose.